The four ways challenge for July 1st is to turn an embellished bowl. So here are some photos of my bowl and I'm going to have more photos and videos of my completed project at the end of the video. So thank you and enjoy. All right, well, thank you very much for tuning in one more time to another Four Ways to Turn Something video. July 1st, and the topic is going to be turning an embellished bowl. I have a piece of basswood here. goes by several different names, uh, linden, uh, lime wood. It's a great carving wood, and I'm not sure. We'll have to see if it's uh, going to work out here for this particular video. Now, I've got to pick one or two or three ways to embellish this wood. I'm going to start by turning a bowl. And I, this wood is plenty dry, so it's in good shape. Uh, it is seven and three quarter across, 11.5 centimeters, and four inches in depth this way. So let's go over the bandsaw. We'll cut this round very quickly and then we'll start turning this project for today. Yeah. Alright now keep in mind that the focus of this video is to embellish a bowl. I've got some ideas at this point. I haven't really uh, carved those ideas in stone. As I cut this round on my bandsaw I'm going to put up some of the different embellishing techniques that I have done. I've done quite a few, but I don't want to get carried away on this. All right, so anyway, let's uh, go ahead and cut this round. And as I do, I'm going to put up some of those embellishing techniques. Not sure what I'm going to do. Okay, now as you can see on this list, I have a lot of different options for embellishing at my disposal. And I've got to be careful not to go too far. And I think I did a pretty good job of simply making a picture um, on the outside of this bowl. There's going to be some cattails and grass and dragonflies. But I think, it, I think it's okay. I'm very happy with the results. And I hope you stay tuned and see how I accomplished this project and how I did it. And uh, I went step by step and showed you different things including some airbrushing so please enjoy thank you okay i've got my bowl blank all ready to chuck up i'm gonna put this onto a screw chuck and we're on the way to embellishing a bowl okay Lock my headstock, and if that does not appear to be safe for you, don't do it. All right. <clears throat> and I really don't think I need to uh, bring up my tailstock for support. I think I'm, I'm in good shape here. All right, now I've got a, a large bowl gouge with a swept back uh, wing on it. And I'm going to just level off this surface. Keep in mind this is cross grain. Grain's running this way. And I'm going to cut across the grain with a push cut. I'm going to just check and see where my center line is. Raise my tool rest up just, just a little bit. So I'm going, to, I'm going to start working around this corner down here and then form my tenon. Now I'm turning right at 1400 RPM.
Okay, now I'm going to work a little bit on my tenon here. And the dimension I have is about two and a quarter or two and a half, somewhere in there. I'm going to use the chuck jaws that I have in my headstock, okay? And if I tighten those jaws down completely, they're right at two inches, all right? So I'm going to start with my bowl gouge. Make that area a little bit deeper. And I'm going to finish up with a spindle gouge that's a little bit smaller. Okay, now I didn't have my tail center up for support, so I don't have that little uh, indentation there where my center is, so I just put a very, very light pencil dot on there, so when I go to reverse this, I can find my center. All right, now when it comes to designing any piece that you have on the lathe that you're going to turn, it's not a bad idea to start with a little bit of uh, paper or poster board and I'm aiming for something like this okay it's got a very gradual curve up to here and a little bit of a an OG for an entire shape it's a little bit on the closed side okay just a little bit so this will give me perhaps a little area in here to do some detail if I put something down here you'll never see it when it's sitting on a table so a little planning in terms of shape and my design is what I'm going for. I've got the camera repositioned so you can see the horizon here. I'm just about where I want to be. That didn't take long. One decision I need to make later on is whether to turn this tenon into a little bit of a foot. I'm not, just not sure at this point. Uh, it's not important right now. I've got some badly torn grain up here in the end grain area. So I'm going to do some, uh, some more work with my my bowl gouge and then probably scrape this entire surface and make it really clean. It's turning very nicely. Okay, this is a this is an excellent uh, wood to turn with. Now, you can't see this at all, but you can watch right up in here. I'm going to use uh, a gouge with a traditional grind. And I think I can get a lot better cut on that with this tool. That did a pretty good job. I've got some torn grain right here that I need to deal with. Now, one thing you can do when you're battling torn grain is just wet the surface. Now, right in here, this side grain is just really, really nice. It's uh, cutting very, very cleanly. But I'm going to just saturate this. I could use some mineral oil but I'm afraid that might interfere with my final finish, whatever I'm going to apply to that. So I'm just using some water. I'm going to turn the speed up to maybe 1400. All right, that did a much better job on that. So I'm going to work around this surface with a 
Now, it's been a while since I really churned any basswood, and I'm very pleasantly surprised at how well this wood behaved. It's beautiful wood. It turns really, really nice, and it's a great wood for doing a little bit of carving and embellishing. It's a, a great uh, canvas for painting and carving and other things. So I'm just finishing up with a traditional scraper and uh, getting that surface ready to do some embellishing. So uh, let's move on. All right, now I'm gonna go to a negative rake scraper, a round nose scraper, and get into this uh, concave area right here. All right, I'm gonna show you about 10 seconds of sanding here. All right, I sanded that to 320, and I'm ready for a little bit of embellishing. All right, let me show you what I have planned for at least part of the embellishing on this bowl. All right, I'm gonna start down here. I'm gonna put a groove in there just to kind of define the area with a point tool, okay? Then I'm gonna follow with this particular texturing tool and I'm going to just come up here this is going to be kind of a ragged area and I'm going to say that it'll represent uh, grass or weeds or something like that right in this area then I'm going to add some cattails right up along here and I may do some airbrushing with uh, dragonflies or whatever other stencils I can find that I can manage. And there'll be some color in here. I think it's a nice uh, uh, blank slate for some texturing. So let me start with a little bit of a, a groove in here with my point tool. Now, when this is sitting on a surface, on a table or something, this may be a little bit below your line of sight, but that's okay. That'll make that person pick that bowl up and sort of look down here to see if there's anything else that they can look at, any other surprises. And that's always kind of a, kind of a nice thing. All right, now I'm gonna to try to give you a good view of this. At the same time, I wanna stay out of, out of the line of your your site. So I want to come along here and, and all I'm going to do is is turn my lathe on and just kind of uh, move that back and forth like that. That'll that'll create a, a fairly rough surface. Yeah, let's see what I'm turning at. Maybe 800 RPM or thereabouts. Take a look at that. Yeah, I like that a lot. It's a little bit on the random side. It's a little bit rough, 
I want to come up here a little bit higher, however. And I may just turn my speed up just a little bit on this. Okay, now I don't, I don't want to hit this with sandpaper. I don't want to take off any of that uh, detail on there. So I've got a handful of, of shavings. And I'm just going to sort of burnish the surface with. And that, that should do it. That should be enough. Let me give you a, a real nice close-up of that so far. Okay, now let me make one comment about this surface here. This is end grain. This is end grain right here. Okay, right in this area. And this is side grain. Okay, and the texture looks a little bit different. If you follow that around from the area of the end grain to the side grain, but maybe only you and I will notice that. I'm going to take a piece of laminate material and maybe make a, a little bit uh, darker edge with that. Darken that groove, I should say. Try to get this into the camera here. There's a little bit of smoke coming off that. Okay, now, if I don't like that, I can kind of cut that back with some sandpaper, but that, that just defines the lower edge of that, that detail. All right, on to some cattails. All right, now I've got the bottom of my bowl uh, masked off right there. I'm going to just leave it natural down there. I got my airbrush ready and I've got some brown dye in there. What I'm using is uh, just some trans tint dye that's mixed up with lacquer thinner. And I'm going to I'm going to paint this area in here where this texture uh, is. Now I'm going to try to go very slow and deliberate. It'd be really hard to take this paint off this area. We got too much on there. I readjusted my camera so you could see more of my airbrush. Alright, I've got a piece of clear mylar on here and the next operation I'm going to airbrush some grass in here and I don't think you're going to be able to see where I've got that cut out. I've got some green in my airbrush and I'm going to try to stay out of your way. That's not too bad. Okay, what I just attempted to do turned out to be really hideous. So I took it away, I resanded this area, I did a little bit of uh, airbrushing, and I'm going to go back to something I know a little bit more about. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my little uh, Proxon carver. 
and carve in the grass, okay? This needs to be a little bit more subtle and delicate. So let me, let me bring it around here. We'll, we'll try this again. And I think what I'll do to help, I'm gonna block my spindle. And the way this little Proxime Carver works, just turn it on. And it doesn't really do anything until you press that into the wood. So let's, uh, let's see here. Yeah, I like that. That's much better. Yeah. Now, this is actually a technique I saw Trent Bosch use in a DVD years ago where you color the surface and then you carve it and you end up with a you know a, a light colored area there so I'm gonna work my way around this probably won't show you everything but Okay, let's uh, let's take a look at and see what we have here. This is a better view of the the green I added through here in the grass. I hope that looks like grass. And maybe what I'll do up here is add a little blue for sky. So from the ground to the grass up here, blend that in with a little. Uh, airbrushing with some blue. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my my burner and do a little pyography. I'm going to put some cattails in here and hopefully I'll do it sparingly. I don't want to overdo this. I think that's a, enough. You get the idea on the grass so far. Okay, let's move on here. Okay, now I'm going to use my biography burner and put a, a few cattails in here and I believe this is called a skew looks like a skew doesn't it so let's find a kind of a bare spot on here and what I like to do is just rock this back and forth and that's going to be the main stalk of the cattail and I'm going to come down here with a little finer line and then on top of the cattail and I don't know what you call that let's try another one I'm going to put a different burner in there because I don't like this one. This is a, I would call that a, a skew, but it's got a straight edge on it. Let that heat up a little bit. And what I probably would do here is I will go through with one burner and make part of my cattail like that and then I will come in and do another one okay and I've got the heat turned up fairly high on this all right let's let's do a little maybe just a little tiny one right there 
Okay, I'm going to put the other burner back on. And do the rest of it. So let's go back to, to these. i test this and make sure it's getting hot. I'm going to turn the heat down a little bit. I don't want to, there, <clears throat> make a, a really, really coarse line on that. There. There. Now nature can be beautiful, but I don't think nature is always perfect. And I'll make these stalks go down through there. There. Not bad. All right, I'm going to work my way around here, put a few more cattails in here. Okay, I went around and filled in all the, uh, the cattails. Yeah, I like it. Not too bad, the embellished bowl. Alright, now I am a couple steps away from completing the outside of my bowl and I'm switching to uh, this particular dye. It's a spirit stain that's uh, mixed with denatured alcohol. That's a spirit stain. And I went to this because it's going to offer me a little bit uh, different color for this area right in here. I want to I want a kind of a blue on that. So I'm going to just test my, so I'm testing my color down here on the lower part of my bowl. And what you're hearing is my little airless compressor going off and on. And I want to be very, very uh, subtle with this blue. Hopefully my hand's not in the way there. You can you can see that kind of going from from this green into the blue. And if you've never done any airbrushing, it really it's really cool. And um, I usually use it as more of a a paintbrush, I'm not really uh, doing any kind of really fine um, work on this. I had just a little bit in my cup here, and that's going to go all the way around my my bowl here. I just kind of noticed something that uh, I should correct. I'm going to get paint all over my very expensive Vic Mark Chuck. Somebody's going to call me on that. Okay, we'll put one more, one more layer of tape on this. That should be, that should be good if I can get her. Oh my gosh, there. Yeah, okay. I'm going to try to turn my, my lathe on and see if this works. Yeah, that's not bad. Alright, I like that. I think I'll uh, let that dry and go to the next step. I have one more thing I want to do on this. 
I'm, I'm pretty happy with what I've got so far. Alright, now I've got cattails and grass and I have to do a couple dragonflies. I've got some red in my airbrush. Alright, that's not too bad. I'm having a real hard time not smudging up my, my surface with... Alright. Alright. Okay, we're going to try another little little dragonfly here. I have my wife out here operating the camera because I don't have... There we go. That's a good one. That's a good little dragonfly. Uh, I'm having a hard time lifting this off without smudging the surrounding area. Let's go down here. And I, and I also took my gloves off. I'm, I'm fighting those stupid rubber gloves. So if I get my fingers all, all red, nobody's going to care. Okay, I have selected a little bit bigger dragonfly here. Oh, it was off. We okay, now I have the outside of my bowl pretty much completed. Now I've spent quite a bit of time off camera you know, just kind of fixing things a little bit. Uh, I had too many dragonflies on there, so I took a bunch of them off, but I'm happy with what I've got right now. And I'll show you pictures as, as we go along here. Um, anyway, I've got quite a bit more to do on this bowl. I've got to uh, turn the inside of it, and I think I'm just going to turn it and put a finish on it and uh, nothing fancy from that point. But we have an embellished bowl, and I'm, I'm fairly happy with it. So let me move on, and we'll start um, dealing with the inside of this bowl. Okay, now I've got the uh, outside of my bowl pretty much completed. I'm ready to hollow out the inside. Now, there's always a risk when you do something like this. I've got a lot of hours and time into the outside of this bowl, and I'm very happy with it. Okay, but if something happens where I mess this up, it flies off the lathe, I don't know, uh, I could mess up that surface on the outside. So I got to be careful. The other thing is I used a, a lacquer thinner based die on the outside of this. And if I use lacquer, it might dissolve that finish. Okay, I didn't want to take a chance. So what I used actually was a fast drying polyurethane. And I've got about three coats on this right now. Um, it's a satin, so I think that'll be a, a good finish to go with. So let me find a tool and we'll do a little hollowing on this. All right, now one thing I don't want to do is cross over into this colored area right here and mess that up. The color is, is good right up to this level, so I'm going to be careful when I make this rim not to mess up or interfere with this surface down here. And just sort of define where this rim is going to be.
Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> now I'm going to establish the depth of my bowl, okay? And I've got my depth gauge right here. And what I've done is I've marked that where I want that uh, inner depth to be on my bowl. And you can see right here the gap between the rim and this, this little marking uh, gauge is about, you know, an inch and a half. I've got quite a ways to go down there. So I'll leave this setting on here, right here, and, and check it periodically. And you're hearing some noise in the background. That's my wife uh, turning back there. We'll try to ignore her. Okay, I did a little bit of work establishing the, the final depth on that, and I'm about an eighth of an inch from my rim. I'm going to leave that about right there so I can uh, maybe do some scraping on that later on. And what I did was I went to more of a bottom feeder grind, a traditional grind on this tool, so I could get around that corner. Now, I still have a lot of um, thickness right here. Okay, so uh, I'll go back to the rim and start uh, taking wood off here and work my way down and establish that thickness on that uh, wall all the way down to the bottom. Alright, now I'm working my way down from the rim this way. I've got a couple more cuts to go in here, so what I'll do is I'll establish the final thickness down to this level right here. All right, now off camera, I'm, I'm working my way down to the bottom of my bowl, and I'm, I'm very happy with the thickness in here. This area right here, and if you can see it on the outside where it kind of goes back into that OG shape, it, it's really hard to reach. So what I've done is I'm going to draw a pencil line here and one about here. And that's the wood I need to remove right in there, okay? But this area is difficult to reach, so I got my bottom feeder, and I'm going to just kind of work that down and go around that corner down there. All right, I've got my, um, my bowl pretty much completed on the inside. The very bottom of that is a little bit thick. And what I'm using is a traditional scraper. And this is really relatively safe. 
<laughs> compared to the wall out here. But right down in here, I need to go down a, a good eighth of an inch. I can feel that. There's a little uh, ridge or hump there. I'll find the center right there. Draw that tool towards me. Okay, now I've got the inside of my bowl covered with some water. I'm going to let that dry, let it raise the grain. It really, really looks nice at this point. And um, sort of forgot I was turning basswood, but boy, it turns, <laughs> turns really nice. Turns like butter. But uh, it's not the most exciting wood, and I think it's a good wood to do some embellishing on. So anyway, I'm going to work on this a little bit more, put some finish on that on the inside, and then deal with my foot, and I'll show you the finished bowl. Alright, here we are at the very end of the project. The last thing I need to do is take off this tenon, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make this completely flat on the bottom. I'm not going to have a foot or anything. So. I got the inside of my bowl completed, finished, and I'll show you that. But uh, let me uh, do a little bit of work on this and uh, get rid of this nasty old tenon. Okay, now as I finish the bottom of my bowl, I also add a butterfly on the bottom, and I'll show you a picture or two here at the very end. And I appreciate you watching. Uh, clear to the end of this video and uh, thank you and uh, I look forward to seeing the other four-way turners and see what they did with their embellished bowl so once again thank you very much please share and like my videos and subscribe and I will talk to you next time thank you